Here's a notes on section 12.4 on the cross product. So on page 814 and 815, the topic is the cross product. Here's a definition of the cross product on page 815. Although this is not the version that I want you to use, I'll show you what I want in a second. But if you have two three-dimensional vectors, the cross product only applies to a three-dimensional vector, not two-dimensional. So if A is A1, A2, A3, B is B1, B2, B3, the cross product A cross B, the X, sort of like the multiplication X, we had dot product with a dot, cross product is like so. Here's a definition, I'm not even gonna talk about it much because this is not the version that I want you to use. Okay, the version I want you to use is this one down here, number seven. So if you wanna put number seven on your formula sheet, you may, you may A cross B is a three by three determinant determined by I, J, and K, A1, A2, A3, and B1, B2, B3. So we have to reveal a little bit about determinants. You might recall for a two by two determinant, you have bars, a, B, C, and D, four real numbers. And it's defined to be A, D minus B, C. The bars do not mean absolute value. This quantity can be positive, negative, or zero. So a two by two determinant with four real numbers here, you go A times D, B times C. And there's an example here. Okay, the determinant, not the absolute value, the determinant of two, one, negative six, four is two times four minus one times negative six, and it comes out to be 14. Okay, and this is how you might recall a three by three determinant, equation five on page 815. And if you wanna put this on your cheat sheet, you may also. Okay, so if you have a three by three determinant, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3, you extract out the top row, A1, A2, and A3, they become coefficients, A1, a negative A2 for the middle one, and A3 for the last one. So it goes A1, keep that sign, the opposite of A2 and A3. And then notice it's B2, B3, C2, C3, which is what you get if you block out A1's row and column, then you see these four numbers. And then B1, B3, C1, C3, if you take A2 and block out that row and column, then you see these four numbers. And then block out A3's row and column. If you imagine you cover that and cover that, <clears throat> then you see B1, B2, C1, C2. And we already know how to do two by two determinants, right? So this becomes A1 times that minus that, minus A2 times that minus that, plus A3 times that minus that. <clears throat> and they give you an example here. Okay, evaluate this determinant. So you extract out the top row, one, two, negative one, keep the sign of one, change the sign of two, keep the sign of negative one. And then the two by two becomes zero, one, four, two. Notice if we take the one, block out the row and column, then you see zero, one, four, and two. Okay, and then the minus two, remember the second one has to be a negative, which means the opposite of this number. Okay, block out that row and column, and you see three, one, negative five, and two. And then block out that negative ones, row and column, and you see three, zero, negative five, four. So that becomes one times nothing minus four, minus two times six minus and minus five, plus negative one times 12 minus nothing, and it comes out to be negative 38. All right, so with that in mind, that is now how we're gonna evaluate a three by three determinant. So A cross B, is I, J, and K, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, right? And there's an example here on page 816. So they give us two, notice it has to be three dimensional vectors, one, three, four, and two, seven, negative five. The cross product is the top is always I, J, K, and then you put the components of A, one, three, four, and the components of B, two, seven, negative five. So notice it's gonna be something times I, negative something times J, plus something times K. So it's keep the I, negative J, then K. Then block out I's row and column, and you see three, four, seven, negative five. 
black out J's row and column, and you see one, four, two, negative five, and black out K's row and column, and you see one, three, two, seven. So that's negative 15 minus 28i minus negative five minus eight J plus seven minus six K. So it comes out to be negative 43i plus 13j plus k. All right. Okay, here's a theorem. You can put this on your cheat sheet. The vector a cross b is orthogonal perpendicular to both a and b. So you say, what's so good about having this cross product? One nice thing is that it gives you a vector that's orthogonal perpendicular to both a and b. Okay, they go through a little proof of that to show that two vectors are orthogonal, then their dot product has to equal zero. So they took a cross b and dot it with a and you get zero and something similar works if you take a cross b dot it with b. Yeah, comment that uh, for the cross product it obeys the right hand rule. So if you start, if you have a cross b, if you take your right hand and have your right hand in the direction of a and curl it toward b, okay, then your right thumb points in the direction of the cross product a cross b. So imagine the picture right here. I can't really show it to you um, in this video. But if your right hand is facing A, curl your right hand toward B, and your thumb will point in the direction of the cross product. All right. OK. And here's a theorem. It's actually not that useful, but it's still true. Uh, theorem 9 on page 817. The magnitude of A cross B is norm A, norm B, sine theta. Remember, norm means length or magnitude, and they give you a proof of that. Okay, It's actually easier to use the theorem for the dot product to find a particular angle, since dot products are easier to compute than cross product. But nevertheless, it is a true statement. Okay, And a corollary, two non-zero vectors A and B are parallel if and only if the cross product is the zero vector. Notice it's bow, that's a zero vector. So what do you get from a cross product? You get back a vector. Remember when you had a dot product, you get back a scalar, but for a cross product, you get back a vector, okay? <clears throat> All right, and here's a nice theorem on page 818. The length of the cross product A cross B is equal to the area of the parallelogram determined by A and B. So if you have two vectors, in space now, two space vectors, they determine a parallelogram. The area of the parallelogram turns out to be the magnitude of the cross product, which is very nice. And they go through a proof of that. You can look at it or not. Okay, here's some uh, nice properties. You don't really have to memorize it, but I cross J is K, J cross K is I, and so on. And to prove it, you just literally do it, okay? More properties of the cross product, page 819, they're all true. Uh, we won't really work with them that much. They're not that necessary, except maybe the first one. A cross B is the opposite of B cross A. So the cross product is not commutative, but it's anti-commutative. And this is a definition of anti-commutative, that B cross A is the opposite of A cross B. I guess that kind of makes sense if you take the right-hand rule and curl. Well, if you switch them, then you would actually have a left-hand rule, so to speak, if you go B first and go in the direction of A using your left hand, then your thumb would point in the direction of the cross product using your left hand. Okay. All right, triple product, okay. Three vectors that are non-coplanar, A, B, and C, they form a three-dimensional box, technically called a parallel pipid, fancy word, parallel pipid. It's a slanted box, <coughs> as it were. So if you take the three vectors, A, B, and C, they determine a parallelogram, okay? We can actually determine something about the parallelogram. <laughs> First, A dot B cross C <coughs> can be written as A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3, three by three by three determinant. <coughs> and here's a theorem that you want for this and put this on your cheat sheet, page A20. The volume is the absolute value of the scalar triple product. Absolute value of A dot B cross C. <coughs> this time, this means absolute value because a dot product is a scalar. 
Okay, this is a vector. Vector dot vector is a scalar, so this is absolute value. Okay. <coughs> okay, so homework problems. HA21, I'll go ahead and show it to you. For those of you that don't have the book and aren't getting it. Uh, and we had to go how far? We had to go to problem 37, I think it was. Whoops. All right, so hopefully that's readable. All right, so now we'll go through some of the problems that are here. Give myself another pen here. All right, so number one, A is two, three, zero, B is one, zero, five. Cross product, I, J, K, two, three, zero, one, zero, five. Okay, so let me try to make this a little bit bigger. It's not doing that for me. All right, so you go I minus J plus K always. Then three, zero, zero, five, block out I's row and column. Then for J, block out J's row and column, two, zero, one, five. And then K, block out K's row and column, two, three, one, zero. So I times 15 minus nothing, negative J times 10 minus nothing, plus K, zero minus three. So 15, negative 10, negative three. <clears throat> okay, then it says show that the cross product is orthogonal, that means perpendicular to both a and V. So you just take the dot product. So A cross B dot the original A. So two, three, zero, right? So 15 times two is 30. Negative 10 times three is 30. Negative three times nothing is nothing, adds up to zero. Okay. And same thing, show that A cross B is perpendicular to B or orthogonal, means their dot product is zero. So take the cross product 15, negative 10, three, and dot it with the original B of one, zero, five, 15 times 1 is 15, negative 10 times 0 is 0, negative 3 times 5 is 15, and again, you get 0. Okay, These double slashes means end of proof or what was to be proved. <clears throat> okay, 7 is actually the same thing, even though there's variables involved. Okay, So you don't have to have only real numbers to take a cross product. You can have variable expressions. So A is T1, 1 over T, B is T squared, T squared 1. So for A cross B, the top is always I, J, K. Then you put the components of A, T, 1, 1 over T. Components of B, T squared, T squared, 1. So it's I times that minus that minus J times T, 1 over T, T squared, 1, plus K times T, 1, T squared, T squared. Oh, so that's going to be 1 minus T for the I minus J times T minus T, which is zero, of course, plus K times T cubed minus T squared. So that comes out to be one minus T, zero, T cubed minus T squared. So that's the cross product. Now show that it's orthogonal perpendicular to each of the original vectors. So I take that cross product, one minus T, zero, T cubed minus T squared, dot it with the original A, T, one, one over T. Okay, and if you work it out, it comes out to be zero. Okay, I right, leave off the major details there, but it works. And likewise, A cross B dot B, one minus T zero, T cubed minus T squared, dot T squared, T squared one. Okay, well that times that is T squared minus T cubed, zero times anything is zero, T cubed minus T squared, and that comes out to be zero also. <clears throat> Problem 13 asks if an expression is a vector, a scalar, or meaningless. Okay, so recall that if you have a cross product, you get a vector. Dot product gives you a scalar. So B cross C is a vector. So you have vector dot vector, that comes out to be a scalar. A cross B dot C. B dot C is a scalar. A vector cross a scalar has no meaning. So that's considered meaningless. C, B cross C is a vector. So you have a vector cross vector. That's also a vector. So that comes out to be a vector. 
All right, then problem number 19. I'll show you quickly what that one was about. It says find two unit vectors orthogonal to both three, two, one and negative one, one, zero. So the cross product will give me a orthogonal vector. We know how to make it a unit vector. And then the negative of that would also be orthogonal. <clears throat> so we take U cross V, I, J, K, three, two, one, negative one, one, zero. So it's I times two, one, one, zero, minus J, cross that out, three, one, negative one, zero, plus K times three, two, negative one, one. So it's I times nothing minus one, minus J times nothing minus a minus one, plus one, plus K times three minus a minus two, five. So we have negative one, negative one, five. <clears throat> All right, so unit vectors, would be negative one, negative one, five divided by the magnitude of negative one, one, five, which is negative one squared plus one squared, a uh, negative one squared plus 25, that's 27. So <clears throat> negative one, negative one, five over three radical three. The other unit vector is the opposite of that. So I just change every sign, one, one, negative five over three radical three. So those two vectors are just going in the opposite direction. 21 just asks you to prove that the zero vector cross A is the zero vector. So we just do it, i, j, k, the zero vector in 3D is zero, 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 a1, a2, a3. So you can see it's i times zero minus zero minus j times zero minus zero plus k times zero minus zero, which is zero, 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 or the zero vector. Okay, 27, well, let's take a look at what they originally say. Find the area of the parallelogram, parallelogram with vertices A, B, C, and D. They're giving it to you in 2D, but let's use the three-dimensional version where all the Z components are zero, right? So let Z equal zero. I just stuck on a zero at the end. So that means point A is negative three, zero, zero. B is negative one, three, zero, and so on, okay? So I formed a vector A, B to go from A to B Delta X is two, delta Y is three, delta Z is zero. Or you can take X two minus X one, Y two minus Y one, Z two minus Z one. But it's basically, if I go from A to B, what's delta X, delta Y, and delta Z? Similarly, from A to C, from A to C, delta X is eight to go from negative three to five, or five minus a negative three. Delta Y is two, I'm going from zero to two, or two minus zero is zero, delta Z is zero. Take the cross product, A, B, cross A, C, I, J, K, two, three, zero, eight, two, zero. <clears throat> I times nothing minus nothing, minus J times nothing minus nothing, plus K times four minus 24, which is negative 20. All right, so negative 20 K, the magnitude of the cross product, A, B, cross A, C is clearly 20. So the answer is 20, that is the area of that parallelogram. Okay, let's look at 29. So find a non-zero vector orthogonal to the plane through the points P, Q, and R, and find the area of the triangle P, Q, R. So the area of a triangle is gonna be half the area of the parallelogram. So I use the same trick as I did for the previous problem, except multiply by half to get the area of a triangle. <clears throat> All right, so we have these three vectors in space now. So we have three space vectors I'm trying to get here. Okay, feebly try to show you. Okay, three vectors in space, they form a parallel pipe in. Okay, and uh, well now we're just talking about area of a triangle. So one point here, <clears throat> one point here, one point here, a space triangle. What is the area? So I find PQ, negative three, one, two, from P to Q, from P to R, three, two, four. Okay, delta X from one to four is three, delta Y is two, from zero to two, delta Z is one to five, which is four. Take the cross product. So it's I times one, two, two, four, minus J times negative three, two, three, four, plus K times that minus that, negative three, one, three, two. So it's I times 
four minus four, which is zero, minus j times negative 12 minus six, which is negative 18, plus k times negative six minus three, which is negative nine. So zero, 18, negative nine. <clears throat> so the area is one half the magnitude of zero, 18, negative nine, because if I just look at this, that's the area of the parallelogram. Half of that would be the area of the triangle. So one half of the square root of zero squared plus 18 squared plus negative nine squared, which is the same as nine squared. So I factored out the nine squared and that gives me two squared plus one. So nine over two radical five. Okay, then 33. Find the volume of the parallel pipette determined by the vectors A, B, and C. Okay, so this is where you have the three vectors in space. Okay. Vectors one, two, and three. And they determine a three-dimensional slanted box, perhaps. And what is its volume? <clears throat> so it's the absolute value of the scalar triple product. So one, two, three was the first vector. Negative one, one, two is the second vector. Two, one, four is the third vector. <clears throat> I put abs meaning absolute value. That's the way it is in a lot of programming languages for you computer science people. I could put another set of bars, but that looks weird to have absolute value. You know, the bars, you got bars inside bars. Might be confusing. So I'm just putting ABS for absolute value. <clears throat> so take the top row, keep the sign, change the sign, keep the sign. So one minus two, three. Okay, then one, block out the row and column. I see one, two, one, four. And then the two, represented by the negative two there, negative one, two, two, four, and then the three, negative one, one, two, one. So it's the absolute value of one times four minus two, which is two, minus two times negative four minus four, which is negative eight, plus three times negative one minus two, which is negative three. And now that I can write all this without these extra bars, I can just put the regular absolute value, two plus 16 minus nine, final answer is nine. Okay, but if this had come out to be negative nine, I would take the absolute value and the volume is nine because volume, of course, is always positive. Okay, and finally for 37, use the scalar triple product to verify that the three vectors u, v, and w are coplanar. So three vectors in space are coplanar. You can't see what I have. Maybe that, oh, yeah, maybe like this. Three vectors in the plane of my table right now. I just kind of move it up into space, but keep that same orientation. Okay, it still represents a plane. And how can I do that? I can do that if I can show that the volume determined by the three vectors is zero. All right, so the three vectors were one, five, negative two, three, negative one, zero, five, nine, negative four. So one times something minus five times something minus two times something. So one times negative one, zero, nine, and negative four, minus five times three, zero, five, negative four. And then minus two times three, negative one, five, nine. So it's one times four minus nothing, minus five times negative 12 minus nothing, minus two times 27 minus a minus five, which is 32. Four plus 60 minus 64 is zero. Therefore, the volume is zero. So the volume is zero. Therefore, uh, the three vectors are coplanar. So the picture is just like this, literally the plane of my paper right here. Okay. <clears throat> so the last thing I want to say is that again, the dot product, a dot b is a scalar, a cross b is a vector, okay? And just for future reference, we'll need this later. We call in two dimensions, the point slope form y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 to go from one point to another where m is delta y over delta x. We'll use that concept uh, much more in a future lesson. All right, so that was section uh, 12.4.